What's happening guys, how's it going? So, yeah, I'm sure most of you are probably aware that the interesting heavyweight fight between two unbeaten British prospects, Daniel Dubois and um, Joe Joyce, is going to be taking place pretty soon. Um, you know, shout out to Frank Warren and his company for making this fight. I honestly wasn't expecting them to make this fight. I thought this was going to be one of them fights that they would tease for a while and, you know, tell us that, oh, these guys can fight when one of them's a world champion. And, you know, you know, like they usually do with UK prospects. Very rarely do they have two, like, top UK prospects, particularly in the UK, um, you know, in, in, in the heavyweight division, I mean, to fight each other. So I was quite surprised this one got made. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. This is going to be a good fight. And I actually got asked if I want to go to this fight. And I might consider it. It really depends on if I can be bothered um, traveling around about that time, you know, because I'm, I'm planning to go down to England and see some friends and family and whatnot, and if, if we, yeah, if we end up deciding to go to this one in London, I might do that, you know, it might be a good one to go to, because I definitely think this is going to be a good fight, it's just that London is one of these places that every time I go there, man, it's like a pain in the arse to get to, like parking and stuff like that, and public transport and shit, it's just such a, a pain in the arse, to get to a fight in London, like, it's so much easier when fights are in Manchester, Leeds, and places like that, they're just so much easier to get to and whatnot, but you never know, I might decide to go to this one, so let's talk about it, so Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce, I have a definite preference to, for who I think is going to win this fight, and it might surprise a few people, I think Daniel Dubois is going to win this fight, and I think he's going to win this fight more than likely, probably by knockout, now, Joe Joyce, I've been somewhat impressed by Joe Joyce. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's very tough, very durable, you know, shown an excellent chin, shown pretty decent power. He's got a good engine for such a big guy, you know, very um, physically, um, you know, he's a physical specimen. He's very strong, very durable, knows how to walk you down. You know, he's got a good chin, he's tough. Um, you know, when I watched quite a few of... Joe Joyce's amateur fights, he was always very imposing, even in the amateurs, and it was interesting, when Joe Joyce sort of first came into boxing, he was very crude, like, he didn't really have a whole lot of skill, didn't really have great balance, you know, wasn't very technically good, I mean, if you look at all through Joe Joyce's amateur career, he was never a slick boxer, he was never a technically very good fighter, but he was just so physically strong, and so durable, and would walk you down, and, you know, he was kind of like a, um, the best way, best way I could describe Joe Joyce as an amateur, he was kind of like Antonio Margarito, you know, just would walk you down and would outwork you and sort of outmuscle you and, you know, he would use his size to his advantage. And when he first turned pro, as you guys know, he was working with David Hay and he was being trained with Ismail Salas, so who I did actually hear he was supp supposedly getting back with, apparently. I don't know if that's um, if that's for definite or not, but I did hear about that. But yeah, early on in his career, they were trying to kind of um, turn him into more of a back foot boxer, more of a slick boxer on the outside, a guy who would, you know, work off the jab and keep his opponents at long range, kind of like a, a Vladimir Klitschko type, you know, keep his opponent at bay and then knock him out with straight punches. You know, that was how he was kind of being built up in the early stages of his career. However, um, a few fights into his career, he decided to change things up a bit and he, he hired Abel Sanchez. And when he was training with Abel Sanchez, he was kind of more like the old George, you know, Joe Joyce, where he was more aggressive on the front foot and, and trying to outwork guys and, you know, being more of a pressure fighter, kind of like all Abel Sanchez fighters. I mean, you look at the likes of um, a Shafikov and a Golovkin and a, a Gassiev, you know, all of Abel Sanchez's fighters all fight that type of style. They're all very aggressive, come forward fighters. So it made sense for... A bit of an experiment for Joe Joyce to try and, you know, maybe see if he could adopt that type of style and, and work well under Abel Sanchez. And for a while, while he was with Abel Sanchez, he looked very impressive. He looked very um, physically imposing in the ring. He was really using that aggressive and that toughness to his um, advantage. But um, yeah, I, I guess that didn't really work out for him. He, he stopped working with Abel Sanchez. And it, it's, cr it's crazy, like, for as long as Joe Joyce has, has been fighting, which isn't very long. He's only been a pro for a couple of years. I mean, I remember when he fought Ian Lewis in, in his, as his pro debut. I saw that fight live, and he, he did a very good job to, to fight somebody as experienced as that, as, as his pro debut. And since then, he's had, he's had, like, multiple different trainers already, man. I mean, and sometimes that's a, a negative sign when you see a fighter who 
can't really stay with one trainer. Like, I remember Chad Dawson was kind of like that. Do you guys remember when he was around about his peak and he was constantly jumping from trainer to trainer and it was as if he was constantly trying to adopt different styles each time he fought and he was never that effective. Like, any time he fought a world-class opponent, he always either lost or he looked really awful. So it, it could be a problem, but I think so far, Joel Joyce, because he's in the early stages of his career, because he hasn't really been a pro for that long, He's trying out different trainers. He's sort of playing the field and he's seeing which style of trainer suits him. And I guess he just hasn't really figured it out yet who he wants to stick with and who would suit him the most as a trainer. So I get that he um, wants to try new things, different styles and see what works for him. I actually think that his best chance of beating Daniel Dubois would be to adopt the earlier style that he had when he fought Ian Lewis and whatnot, where he's staying on the outside and trying to keep his opponents at bay. The problem is that Joe Joyce comes across to me as a fighter who instinctively goes back to type. You know, he reverts to type when he's in, in, a, in a tough situation, and I think that he probably will stand and have a tear-up at times. And, and if he does that against Daniel Dubois, that's a big mistake because Daniel Dubois is a, a, a monster in the ring, guys. Like He's a really big puncher. I'm actually quite surprised, to be honest. I really am surprised that when I see Daniel Dubois, a lot of people don't really seem that excited about Daniel Dubois as a prospect. A lot of people don't rate him, but I've got to be honest, from what I've watched of Daniel Dubois, he hasn't really put a foot wrong yet in his career. I, th I think he, he, he is showing a lot of that same raw talent that Anthony Joshua showed early on in his career. Now, obviously, he hasn't fought the competition that Anthony Joshua has fought, so he can't match Anthony Joshua for experience or accomplishments, but he certainly has shown some of the same aesthetics in the ring, some of the same talent, like a big guy, very muscular, very physically strong, very powerful puncher, hits very hard. And I, I just think that based on the eye test, based on what I've seen so far of Daniel Dubois, he has all the makings of a future heavyweight champion. And let's not forget, the dude's in his early 20s. Okay, he's a couple years younger than me. So the guy's like very young and, and has a, a long time to develop, you know, his... Um, you know, his, his future in the heavyweight division at this moment in time, it looks very bright. It really does. And I think that they've taken the Joe Joyce fight because they understand that they are ready for this type of fight. I think him and his team know. I think Frank Warren knows. And Frank Warren is probably going to favor Daniel Dubois for this fight since he has recently signed a five-year extension on uh, Daniel Dubois' contract. So he has a lot of um, expectations and high hopes for Daniel Dubois. And I think Frank Warren believes and, and understands that Daniel Dubois is the better fighter here and that Joe Joyce, despite being obviously the more accomplished fighter from the amateurs and whatnot, Joe Joyce doesn't have anywhere near the natural talent that Daniel Dubois has, in my opinion. And also, Joe Joyce gets hit too much. He's too easy to hit. I mean, he fought Brian Jennings. He got hit a lot. Fought Bermain Stavern. He got hit a lot. These are shot fighters, guys. These, these were decent contenders at their prime, but they're past their prime and I was not impressed by Joe Joyce at all. Even when Joe Joyce, and I watched this fight too, like even when Joe Joyce fought Alexander Ustinov, and I know he did a very good job, obviously he stopped Ustinov early, stopped him quicker than anyone else in three rounds. And even though he was able to do that, I wasn't impressed. I thought he looked extremely slow during that fight. In fact, I had a feeling watching it that it might have actually been fixed because I, I was watching how slow Joe Joyce looked in the ring and I was like, how is Ustinov, and I know he's pretty slow himself, but I was like, how is Ustinov not seeing these punches coming? And again, I'm not saying the fight was fixed. I'm just saying that it kind of looked like it was for a while because Joe Joyce was throwing such sluggish and crude punches that I'm like, how can a, a seasoned heavyweight fighter not avoid these punches? Like that That's what I kept thinking while I was watching that fight. And I just felt that Joe Joyce to me showed some physical... Um, limitations. Like Again, he's very slow, um, and, and Daniel Dubois isn't slow, so I think that if Joe Joyce tries to walk down Daniel Dubois, Daniel Dubois will be quick enough and sharp enough to catch him on the way in with some big straight punches. I mean, Daniel Dubois has fought some pretty quick guys, like he fought Nathan Gorman, who has very fast hands for a heavyweight, and a lot of people were picking Nathan Gorman to win that fight. I mean, I, I spoke to one of my one of my closest friends who um who has trained at Ricky Hatton's gym a few times and all that. You know, he's a, he's an amateur himself, and 
you know, he witnessed, um, I believe he witnessed Nathan Gorman on the pads and saw him in sparring and whatnot. And he was telling me, yeah, he, he thinks Nathan Gorman's going to whip Daniel Dubois. Um, I saw a lot of videos, prediction videos of people I respect on here who said, yeah, Nathan Gorman's going to school Daniel Dubois. You know, there were a lot of people within the um, boxing establishment, a lot of boxing journalists and whatnot, who thought that Nathan Gorman was going to outbox Daniel Dubois and was too fast for him and too skilled. You know, you had Tyson Fury and people like that picking um, Nathan Gorman to win that. And I know that he's family, but still, you know, you had a lot of people in the industry thought that Gorman was going to win that fight. And I, I, I never quite understood that because I, 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 den I genuinely do think that Daniel Dubois is a little bit underrated. From what I've seen of him, I don't see a whole lot of flaws there. Obviously, there are flaws. And when he fights some elite heavyweights, we'll see those flaws. But right now, I don't see any major flaws. I think that he's done everything he had to do. I mean, against Ebenezer Tete, that, that guy he fought a couple of fights ago, blew him in one round. You know, blew him away in the first round. So, um, you know, against that type of competition, against guys who you expect him to beat, he's beating them no problem whatsoever. And against guys who... Some people expect him not to be like like Gorman, who was meant to be his rival, meant to be a difficult fight for him. He made short work of him, made easy work of Nathan Gorman, blew him away in five rounds. So I'm picking Dubois to beat Jan, to beat Joe Joyce. I think Dubois will knock Joe Joyce out. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? And and look, Joe Joyce has the power to knock Dubois out. He does, okay? Dubois's never really been chin-checked. I guess... Um, you know, Joe Joyce, one, one thing he does have in, you know, in this fight is he has been chin-jacked in the amateurs. And, um, you know, he was beaten up by Usyk. And he showed a lot of heart against Usyk. You know, really didn't give up. He, 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 he showed a lot of courage in that fight. And I thought that... And I've watched that fight a few times. And I thought that even though Joe Joyce got beaten up and schooled, you know, he, he did show a good chin and he did show good resilience in that fight. It's just that he wasn't able to match Usyk for speed or skills. But... I still think Daniel Dubois will beat him, and I mean, it, it's one thing taking punches from Usyk, it's another thing taking punches from a, a big guy like Daniel Dubois, like, th this guy's a big puncher, I'm telling you right now, if he lands those kind of punches on Joyce, he'll knock Joyce out, so I'm picking Daniel Dubois to knock Daniel, to, to knock um, Jojo out, sorry, um, and, and yeah, that's how I see this fight, I see it being competitive early on for a few rounds, but I see Daniel Dubois breaking him down, and I'm going to go for a a late stoppage. I'll say from like round 7 to 12 stoppage for Daniel Dubois. Brutal knockout or a, or a stoppage, you know, because I just think that he's too sharp and too powerful. That, that's how I see this fight. I see Daniel Dubois winning by stoppage. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to this one, man. Thanks for watching. God bless.